And the ninth person to be screened has just walked out of uh, the Senate chambers. La the ninth person to be screened today uh, just walked out. And I think uh, we're seeing our first female making her way to the podium to be screened by the senators. We just finished listening to uh, Senator Abubakar Danladi of Taraba State, and we're seeing the first female uh, making her way to the podium at this screening exercise. Uh, will she be asked to walk? Will she be asked questions? We'll be watching to see how that unfolds. Yeah, uh, you have the floor. Just a, a summarize resume of yourself, and then you answer questions from the civil senators. The president of the Senate, the deputy Senate president, and distinguished uh, senators. I greet you all. My name is U Barista Mrs. Uju Kennedy Ohanenye. I was the only female presidential aspirant, the mama that came on board. I schooled at WTC Primary School, Enugu, and Queen's School, Enugu, and then proceeded to Nnamdiazikiwe University, Oka Campus. I studied law. And in my secondary school, if you could see the certificate that I put in there, I ordered for it in 2019, while I finished in 1986, because my credentials got burned, so I had to write to the school to give me another. So the date they have on the paper is the date I collected it. And then after my uh, uh, university, in Namdiazikiwe University, studying law, I proceeded to law school, Lagos. When I finished there, I went into business, education, especially real estate, but I got into humanitarian jobs, going to hospitals, government hospitals to pay for bills for indigent patients, donating health centers like I've donated in Kogi State, I've donated in Kaduna, Kanu, and a lot in Igbo land and across the nation about eight of them with acquisition centers. So in the process of going to the hospitals, I saw a lot of things that the, the poor people are going through. Sometimes a Nigerian will die over a thousand naira. Not that he's not, he or she is not working hard, but most times what they make is so meager that if they have any kind of challenges, they won't be able to take care of themselves anymore after paying the initial bill. So I, I wasn't feeling very good about it. I have never really been a politician, but this prompted me to join the race as a, one of the, as the only female presidential experience. So I joined the race just for those voiceless people that suffer from the hands of the police, suffer from even in land offices, some people will save up the little money they have to buy a land. By the time they are retiring, some directors will gather together, collect that land from that person, the person that dies of high blood pressure or stuff like that. And being a lawyer, I felt if I could have opportunity with a government backing that I will be able to work on all these things with some of my colleagues like the FIDA, the NUJ, and the other organizations. So I got into politics because of the inhumanity to human 
and the poor masses that are dying every day and the and the lack of lack of a, a, a sensitization because you go to that hospital you see so many children dying of even um, uh, sickle cell anemia and most of their parents don't even understand what it means to be AS or, or these genotypes so I felt if I should have opportunity I will be able to introduce what they call what we used to have before uh, um, what do you call it I will remember that uh, those ones that they go in the, in the villages and make announcements uh, town criers that I will introduce town criers because some of these people they have no radios they have no televisions they don't know, have, have any way to get sensitized, uh, sensitized so I am going to I've, I've already discussed with NUJ I've discussed with all the bodies that will assist me if I am given opportunity by the Senate so that we'll be able to introduce that and get them to know these things and uh, for you able to equally organize some um, uh, uh, physical uh, association of physicians from US they usually come in to treat some of these people free of charge and they have agreed that if opportunity is given they will increase the number of times they visit here please my brothers and sisters I, I'm, I'm here to let you understand that the kind of things these people are suffering even the places I donated some health centers you'll be shocked that somebody will selfishly take over and start using it for something else and you come out and start fighting nobody fights for these people and nobody talks for them so i know this 10th uh, uh, national assembly session i know that you people are quite different i'm not saying that the ones before you are not okay but i am seeing a lot of selflessness in you people that i know that chance will be given for these people to be taken good care of Thank you, Excellency. I remain Senator Onyekachi Peter Mweboy, representing the good people of Eboy North Senatorial District of Eboy State. Madam, I overheard you saying you want to come into politics to give you the opportunity to speak for the poor and, of course, the less privileged. Now, as a woman, what do you have in stock? In knowance of the fact that in some part of our country, Nigeria, particularly in Igbo land, women are barred from inheriting their father's property in case their father dies in testing, what do you have in stock for them to correct this anomaly in view of so many court judgments and of course the Supreme Court judgments that have said no to that uh, barbaric act? What can you do as Honorable Minister? Thank you. This is Senator Ome from Anambra. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is uh, Senator Victor Ume, OFR. I represent the people of Anambra Central Senatorial District. Mr. President, um, if I had had the first nod to speak, that would have been to very proudly to introduce this lady who from the CV you have seen is a lawyer and he, she has been given to very uncommon causes of fighting for less privileged people in society. Listening to her introduce herself, she told us how she was moved to pity when she visited hospitals and saw people who were dying because of lack of care, because of uh, no money to take care of their medical needs and so on and so forth. 
and he decided, she decided to float a shower love foundation. So she didn't just uh, come to politics because people are in politics. She was motivated by passion to serve others who are in difficulties. If you ask me, this lady is our own equivalent of Mother Teresa. Yes, because um, um, it's very, very uncommon, Mr. President, very uncommon, Mr. President, for you to see somebody after acquiring a degree in law who lives uh, playing to the gallery, uh, gallivanting here and there, but paying attention to the less privileged people in the society. So I think um, I'm very grateful to that, to that Mr. President uh, chose her among the females uh, he offered to this country in this cabinet nomination. For us in Anambra State, three senators from Anambra State, myself, Senator Oba and Senator Tony Moye. She comes from my senatorial district, actually. She hails from Oka in Anambra Central Senatorial District. So we will plead that she is audacious enough to answer any question, but because of her commitment to service to the less privileged people in the society, let's encourage her to get all through to that office and use the opportunities that are available to her through government to try to change uh, a lot of things, particularly the scant attention we give to the less privileged in society. She's already on it as an NGO and with many other things she's done. Across Nigeria, she's had a lot of interventions, um, uh, trying to go to different places to bring people out of distress. And I think as a humanitarian that she is, she deserves to be supported by all of us. The questions put on her way notwithstanding, I want to tell this uh, distinguished Senate that three senators from Anambra State are solidly behind her nomination. And we encourage that um, you bear with us and give her that support. Let her go and help the indigent people everywhere in this country. Thank you, Mr. President. And my sister, congratulations. We welcome you to our chamber. Thank you. Of your mic, this is Senator carry me. Thank you, my senior president. My name is carry me Sunday. I represent Cookie West, madam. Looking at your papers, you have done a lot of humanitarian services all over the federation. Kushi Makranta in Kakako local government in Kaduna, in Imo State, in Kogi State, donation of dialysis machines and water tank in the Anugun State, all over the Federation. Thank you. Looking at your task clearance, Your task clearance, will you say you have been paying enough taxes to the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Thank you. What is wrong with the task clearance? It's the President, sir. In 2018, hello? In 2018, you declare an annual income of one million. In 2019, you declare an annual million of 841,000. In 2020, you declare an annual income of 954,000. Could it be under declaration?
This one said it's uh, a little. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting in the chair, distinguished colleagues. Nominee, let me start by first and foremost congratulating you for being nominated by Mr. President. And I look at your resume, I look at what you have been doing, it is highly commendable. Uh, Nigeria has been described as the poverty capital of the world, where we have over 150 million people living in absolute poverty. In the event that you are confirmed as Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, what measures would you take or what advice would you give the government of the Federation to lift this over 150 million people out of poverty in Nigeria? And I'm sure you have an idea based on what you have been doing. Since you have been doing it with your own resources, now you are in government. What contribution can you make to lift these people out of poverty? Thank you, Mr. President. This is Senator Ifanoba. Thank you, Mr. President. Ifanoba, Nambra South Central District. Mr. President, um, I want to buttress more on what um, our colleague has said, congratulating her because it is not easy to have uh, a presidential nominee before us, a presidential um, aspirant before us, and a, and a woman looking at um, gender sensitivity. But most importantly, Mr. C uh, Mr. President, looking at what she has done across the country in terms of humanitarian activities, and then also going to what uh, Senator Karim said, and I'm sure you know in America people that are into charity, that even in America they don't even pay t uh, tax. But in this case, she she's uh, she's paying her tax according to what she earns. You know, so we we are not looking at her as a businesswoman, but someone who is deep into charity, like Mume said, that she's our um, modern day Mother Teresa. Mr. President, I think uh, three of us from Anambra State here. The, I don't have question than to recommend that you take a bow, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Yes, and you have. Yeah. Uh, the, fine. Yeah. So the uh, the, the senator can give a, a woman should ask a woman a question. Mr. President, my name is Reti Kingibe, representing the Federal Capital Territory. I would like to commend the nominee. I would also like to appreciate her. Her CV is also quite impressive. And I think that it speaks for itself. These are the kind of people we need Secondly, she is a woman. We know the value that women bring to the table. And I would like to make a comment about my colleague who wants her to do something about women not having inheritance. I think that should be our duty rather than hers, since we are the legislators. I would also like to support distinguished Senator Ifanyuba by thinking that she also should take a bow, she deserves it, and everybody else has taken a bow. I think she, her CV requires that she does that also. Thank you. The uh, Senator Ereti Kinkibe, any nominee that comes before us will take a bow. Whether the person is cleared or not. At the end of the day, we will go into the clearance and confirmation. We will confirm whether the person is qualified or not. 
But bowing before the hallowed chambers is a tradition all over the world. So if you are saying that others have taken a bow, they took a bow because they entered into these chambers. And they had to, we had to amend our rules. We had to suspend our rules to allow strangers to come in here. And so when they come, they will take a bow. The bow doesn't mean that you have been confirmed. So, so even if she takes a bow, we'll still go into the issue of confirmation later. Is that clear? Yes. Is there any other person from Anambra who would like to say something? Yes, Tony Woye. Thank you, my dear president, distinguished colleagues. My name is Dr. Tony Woye. I represent the group of Anambra Central Districts. Distinguished colleagues, my dear president, mine is just to add my voice to what my brothers have already said and what uh, Senator Yurit King Gibe also said that this hollow chamber sees a reason to allow her to go for now, pending the time we're going to do the confirmation. And also for me to advise her that if the Senate eventually confirms her by God's grace, that she should do her best, that she should do her best to augment any ministry that is given to her, she should do her best strive her best within her limit to improve the lives of Nigerians. Thank you and God bless you. That's a very good contribution, but I need to also let you know that we have a, a no-nonsense president. And so I believe that the, all the ministers and all appointees will be on their toes to give their best to the country. And if you don't, uh, anybody who has had the opportunity to be a governor, and then the president knows very well that you starve for strength. You are looking for people that can come and help you to actualize your vision for your administration. I mean, if some people are not ready to do so, they will fall by the wayside. The last contribution will come from Senator Sadiq, and thereafter she will answer all the questions. And like Senator Ireti said, she will now take a bow. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, uh, City and Chair, my distinguished colleagues. I am Sadiq Suleiman Umar. I represent the good and decent people of Kwara North, and we who are. Uh, nominee, congratulations, and we are proud. Uh, you know, Kwara State is one of the uh, most gender sensitive states in the country, or indeed in Africa. Yes, very friendly to women. We love our women to be in position. So, congratulations. Uh, I have a very simple question. First, do you agree? that the competence, capacity, and so on of a minister is overrated compared to the strength of the systems you are going to operate in. If you agree, we overemphasize the competence. You need, you need to be very competent, you need to be very experienced, and so on. I'm saying that is overrated if you compare it with the strength of the system you are going to operate in, in this case, public service or civil service. I'm saying that the strength of the service is more important than whatever you are bringing in to office. If you agree with that, what are you going to do to ensure that whatever ministry you go to, you find a way of working with that system However weak is it, how are you going to navigate your way around to be sure that you are able to you know, deliver to bring about progress in the country? Do you, you understand the question? Thank you. Thank you, the nominee. Thank you so much. Uh, I would still like to start with the women on in inheritance. Um, some of us nowadays, I think that was the olden time. I have a daughter, and she's going to inherit from me and my husband. It was before. The, more thing, the most important thing women are going through right now is some corrupt civil servants taking over or, or um, king's men taking over their husband's properties from them when the man is dead. That's the major issue the women are having, of which 
I'm, like I said earlier, I'm bringing in FIDA, I'm bringing in MBA. They said it will be applauding for them to be involved. Where will we make sure such a thing never happens again? You try it and they report. So wherever the Senate will approve me to be, will we fight that person to the last? We get, get involved with police and make sure it never happens again. Will we sue them to court, no matter how uh, uh, powerful that person thinks he is? I think with the new president we have now, who said, let the poor breathe and don't suffocate the poor. When he speaks, we the soldiers carry it out. So whoever that does that will be brought to book. Then the issue of uh, the taxes, like my brother has said to you, in normal circumstances, I'm not supposed to pay tax. Just I'm a good Nigerian. I feel that my, my country needs me to contribute. I'm doing a lot of uh, humanitarian works. I've not even mentioned one tenth of what I have been doing. And still, I found it within myself that it was necessary and it's still necessary for me to make a contribution to my country through taxes. So my brother, I am trying my best because it's a self-sponsored uh, self, uh, NGO. Then the poverty solution, I feel like in Nigeria, our children are very brilliant. There are so many things. If I'm given that opportunity to help the human development and humanitarian affairs, if I'm given the opportunity by the Senate, subject to the Senate, please, <laughs> I, will, I will not just give out 5,000. 5, 5,000 can make two pots of soup and the money is gone. I would rather teach them how to fish. How do I do this? I am going to introduce what they call urban centers. I will bring in machineries, uh, industrial machines. Then I will get with the town criers to get to these villages. We are going to get them to learn those tradings, different kinds of trading. And we have an outlet because it's a, a professional that we come in to teach them. And as they're being taught, they're equally working to produce these things like uh, female clothes, uh, babies' clothes in our own material. And then they will use it and make those clothes, and we move it to the outlet. We make it so beautiful. It will almost look like as if it's Western clothes, but in our own indigenous uh, materials. Then we will move it to the outlet where we market it, and they themselves, as they're learning, they will be making money, monthly salary, to, to feed themselves and take care of themselves. That is number one. Then number two, the, the uh, hunters that are in the bush hunting that, or people that are killing cows. There are so many things we can do with the skins of these animals. So this humanitarian or the outlet, the urban centers, will be buying these things from the uh, hunters. And when they are making enough money, which you know the, the ministry will definitely buy it at the correct price, not to sort change them like so many people are doing, they will use it and then they be, be producing those things. Then the issue of hospital, I am in, I'm, I'm going to introduce what they will call humanitarian hospital because a lot of white people are ready to come and build it, sponsor it, if it is humanitarian hospital. And that will bring more employment. And the other people that are ready to bring, the people they call MedShare, med surplus, Project Cure, they are ready to come and equip these hospitals as far as it is meant for the less privileged people. And we're going to use this opportunity to increase our hospitals because if you go to uh, government hospitals, many people are lying outside. Thank you. Sir. Just like in your NGO, if you if you're allowed, you'll do more. And if you're allowed, you'll talk more. So you, you, uh, you, uh, at least, I believe the Senate is well guided. You can take a bow. Next nominee. the 10th ministerial nominee to be uh, screened by the Senate right here at the National Assembly, uh, Uju Ohanenye from Anambra State, uh, the very first... 